Hello and welcome to Neat Hrania YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series, which is designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berets, and today we're going to learn another game by Stefan Feld called Bonfire, published by Hall Games and Pegasus Spiele. To set the game up, place the game board in the middle of the table. Then take these task tiles and either shuffle them or what I like to do is to put them in this kind of a bag and in one or two player game, randomly place two tasks on each island with this dark side up. In a three player game, place three tiles on each island with the exception of these four corner islands. And in a four player game, place three tiles on each island. You can return the remaining task tiles back into the box. Then place the guardians on these small islands of the corresponding color. So each island will have four guardians of the same color. Stack these countdown tiles in a pile so that the number one is on the bottom and number five is on the top. Place the pile on this designated space on the game board. Place these six elder cards face up on the designated space on the game board. Shuffle this deck of specialist gnomes. Place it face down next to the game board and draw the first six cards face up. Place this great bonfire on this space and make sure the arrow is pointing in this direction. Shuffle these path tiles and create two or three stacks face down next to the game board and then reveal four random tiles face up and place them on these spaces. Place these five neutral novices on these common tasks on the game board and all players place their ships on this landing stage and their scoring markers and the 0, 50 markers to this space next to the scoring track. Then take these portal tiles and in a 1 and a 2 player game remove one tile of each type from the game and in a 3 and a 4 player game you will use all these tiles. Then shuffle them or again place them in some kind of a bag and distribute them evenly to these spaces around the bonfire. Remember, in a 1 and a 2 player game, you would only have 3 tiles in each space. Then each player takes one player board and one action overview board. Attach this starting tile for your guardians to the player board. And place the guardian of your color to that starting space. Place all your novices of your color on these spaces on your player board. Shuffle these 8 fade tiles of your color and place 7 of them into this area next to your action overview board and keep the last one face up in front of you for now and shuffle these offering tokens and place them as two piles on the action overview board and each pile will contain five tokens and then flip the topmost tokens face up. Take as many of these extensions as there are players in the game but make sure you include this one. Then shuffle them and give each player one of these extensions and each player places those extensions to this area next to their player board. The player with this specific extension will become the first player in the game. And finally you will take some starting resources and start in action tiles. First, take one resource of each type and place those resources to this area on your player board. Then you will take two yellow action tiles and you will take action tiles from this fade tile or if you want you can swap this tile with the middle tile from the supply next to the action overview board. Take the chosen tile, let's say this one, place it in this area on your player board and then take the action tiles which correspond to these tiles on the fade tile. So in our example those are these three action tiles. Then this tile would be placed over here and the action tiles can be placed in this area on your player board. In Bonfire, players take turns starting with the first player, the player with this extension, and then continuing in a clockwise direction. On your turn, you must choose one of the three following options. The first option is to take the Fate tile, place it in your play area and take additional action tiles. The second option is to spend some of those action tiles and perform the action which corresponds to the action tile you have used. The third option can only be used if you have one of these task tiles and if you meet the condition, the third option is to flip that tile and ignite a bonfire and send the novice to a high council. 
In addition to these three options, if any time on your turn you complete a common task from the game board, you can take this neutral novice and send it to the high council as a bonus action. So you can take this bonus action and your standard action as well. When there are a certain number of novices in this high council, the end of the game procedure would be triggered. Basically, the five round countdown would be started and after those five rounds the game would be over. You will score the victory points for almost everything in the game, but mainly for these bonfires, which are actually completed tasks, for the guardians standing next to those bonfires, for the number of these portals which you have on your player board, and also for the number of paths of the same color as the adjacent bonfire. All the scoring options are listed on the 8 card. Now let's take a look at all three options in more detail. First, you can take a fate tile, place it in your play area and gain additional action tiles. However, you may only take this option when you have maximum one action tile remaining. If you have more than one, you must discard other action tiles so that you have maximum one. So obviously on your first turn, this is not a wise option. However, let's say that you really have only one action tile remaining and now you can take the top or the bottom fate tile you may not choose any other tile only the top or the bottom tile and place this fate tile in your play area you must place it so that it's orthogonally adjacent to at least one of the existing tiles so this kind of placement would not be legal and the tiles may never protrude beyond the edge of the area and they may never cover another tile, not even partially. So after placing the new tile, you will get these three action tiles. And in case any of those symbols are adjacent to other symbols of the same type, for each such adjacent symbol, you would also gain one action tile of the corresponding type. That means it would be much better to place this tile like this. And now you would get these three action tiles and this action tile and this one. So that would be five new action tiles. Then if you would place the next tile, for example, like this, you would get these three action tiles plus this one and this one. The same would apply if you would place the tile like this. You would get one, two, three action tiles plus these two because they're adjacent. Now, when you cover this gold symbol with any of your tiles, take the gold resource into your personal reserve. And if you cover this yellow tile, take the yellow action tile into your reserve as well. Gold is a wild resource and can be used as any other resource. And the yellow action tile is also a wild action tile and can be used instead of any other action tile. The second option on your turn is to perform actions. To do that, you have to pay the action tiles. You can only perform the action if you spend the action tiles of the corresponding type. Now, if you don't have such action tiles, let's say you need to spend this type of action tile and you don't have it in your personal supply, then you can always replace that tile with any yellow tile or any two tiles of any kind of type. The same applies for resources. If you need to spend a resource and you don't have that resource, you can always use a gold as a replacement or instead you can use any two resources as a replacement for one missing resource. So the first type of action is building a path. When you take this action, you can take one of these four face up path tiles or one of the topmost face down tiles from these stacks. And then you can place this path tile to the next available space in your city. For adding first, second and third path tile, you have to pay one green action tile. For adding fourth, fifth and sixth path tile, you have to pay two green action tiles. Then refill the empty space with a new tile from one of the face down stacks. Once you have all six path tiles around your city, you may not take this action anymore. If all four path tiles on the game board would show the same color, you can discard them and place them to the bottom of these stacks and place new four tiles face up. Now, the reason why you need to build these paths is to make sure that your guardians can move along these paths and then get to your bonfires 
and they also provide these resources along the way. The next action is moving your ship. The position of your ship determines which island you can take the tasks from or which island you can take these guardians from. The first time you move your own ship, you have to pay one tile, this blue action tile, and you can move it to any island you want. Then the next time you move your ship, when you pay one action tile, you may move your ship one space or to the next adjacent island and you can only move along these sea routes. And when you pay two action tiles, you can make two movements in one turn. So I could move like this and then potentially to this island. And when you pay three action tiles, you can move your ship to any island of your choice. Then as the bonus action, which means as part of the same turn, you may either take a task tile if you're at the island with the task tiles, or you may take a guardian if you're at the island with the guardians. You still have to pay the full costs for that, but you do it on the same turn. These task tiles are the main source of victory points in the game. The position of your ship determines which island you can take these tasks from. The first time you take a tile from a specific island, you have to pay one red action tile from your personal reserve, and you have to pay two resources. You have to choose one of those two phase up offering tiles from your reserve. And to pay those two resources, you can either use the resources depicted on the island or on this offering tile. So in this case, I can either pay with these two flowers or I can use one resource of each type or I can use two resources of the other type. Again, you can always use gold as any missing resource or two other resources for a missing resource. Then take the task tile, place it on any empty spot on your player board and place the offering tile on that space face down. Then flip the next offering tile face up. Then if you want to buy the second task tile from the same island, you have to spend two action tiles and again, pay two resources, either from the island or from the offering tile. And if you want to take the third task tile from the same island, you have to pay three action tiles and again, spend two resources, either from the offering tile or from the island. The number of action tiles you have to pay depends on number of your own offering tiles on that specific island. So even though there are two yellow offering tiles on this island already, it's the first time green player is taking the task tile from this island, so they only need to spend one action tile. Offering tiles of the same player on any other islands are not taken into consideration. One last note, when you move your ship, you can receive the task as a bonus action during the same turn. However, even if you don't move your ship, you can still take the receive the task action as the normal standalone action on your turn. When you have your ship at the guardian island, you can take one of those guardians and place it on this starting space for the guardians. You may have maximum one guardian of each color. This action always costs one action tile of the corresponding type. Although each path tile can only contain one guardian, this starting tile can contain any number of guardians. However, as I already said, you can have maximum one guardian of each color. The next action is making a procession. With this action, you move your guardians along this path. You have to pay one or more action tiles and you can move all your guardians this number of spaces. You always start moving the guardian which is furthest ahead on the path and when you move the guardians from the starting space, you choose in which order they move. Then when you move the guardian, you can move along the path and if you end your movement on a path tile, you take the resource from the tile where you end your movement. So in this case, it will be this resource. You don't get the resources from the path tiles you skip, only from the tile where you end your movement. Now, when you move your guardian and you are on a path tile which has this portal leading to an active bonfire, you can move that guardian to that bonfire, which will grant victory points at the end of the game. For this kind of movement, you obviously don't get any resources because you end your movement next to a bonfire. When moving these guardians, they may not move 
to the bonfire because there is no bonfire and there's no portal. They only get the resources from the path tile where they end the movement. Remember, there can only be one guardian on a path tile, so this guardian can only move to this path tile and get the gold resource as a reward. When you use this great bonfire, you can take some resources, action tiles or portals. The first time this great bonfire is used by any player, that player has to spend one action tile and rotate this bonfire to any space. Then if the great bonfire will be used by any other player any time later in the game, if that player spends one action tile, they may rotate the bonfire one space clockwise. If they spend two action tiles, they can rotate the bonfire two spaces clockwise. And if they spend three action tiles, they can rotate it to any space they want. Then after the rotation, the active player can take two rewards from these three. They can take the resource, they can take the action tile or one of the available portals. So first option, second option and third. That means they may not take two portals. In addition, when they take a portal tile, it must be a portal which matches the next empty space on the player board. Portals must be placed from right and then in a counterclockwise direction. So this must be the first portal, this must be the second one and so on and so forth. In this case, green player can only place this portal. So if they would do it, they would take the portal tile and place it in the next available matching spot. And then last but not least, you can recruit a gnome. You can either recruit the specialists here or elder over here. Specialists give you permanent abilities for the rest of the game. Elders give you victory points immediately. When buying the card, you have two options have to pay and they are listed next to those cards. You can either spend two action tiles and one resource depicted on the card. So it would be two action tiles and the resource if I would decide to buy this card. Or the other option is to spend one action tile and two resources from the card. So I would have to pay like this. Then I can take the card and place it under the player board. Then immediately refill the empty space with the new card. Now, since these specialists provide permanent abilities for the rest of the game, it's obviously good to buy them early in the game. These elders would score victory points immediately. So the later you buy them, the more points you can score, however, there is a risk that the card will be bought by someone else. You can find the description of all those gnomes and elders in the rulebook. The third option on your turn is to ignite a bonfire. When you meet a condition on one of your tasks, in this case to have a great guardian, you can flip that task and ignite the bonfire. Then you can take the novice from that bonfire and place that novice in the high council which are these eight spots on the game board. You can choose any of those eight spots, but each spot can only have maximum one novice per color. Then take the corresponding reward immediately. In addition to those three standard options on your turn, you can also perform a bonus action if you fulfill a condition on one of these common tasks. You perform this bonus action in addition to the standard action. So if you fulfill a condition and the neutral novice is still there, you can take that novice, place them in the high council as you would place your own novice. So keep in mind that each spot can only have one novice per color, including these neutral novices, and you can immediately gain the corresponding bonus. If you meet the conditions of multiple common tasks during the same turn and the novice is still there, you can repeat this process. Now, these common tasks are evaluated at the end of the game and all players can actually fulfill these conditions and all players can score them. However, only the first player to fulfill that condition will get the chance to take the reward with the neutral novice. The end of the game is triggered when there are certain number of novices in high council. In one and a two player game, it's seven novices 
in a three player game it's 10 novices and 13 novices in a four player game. When it happens, the starting player would take these tiles and basically there are five more rounds in the game. When that starting player takes the next turn, they actually trigger the five rounds countdown. All players take the turns normally and when the turn order comes back to the starting player, they remove the first tile and they start the next round of the countdown. And at any time during these last five rounds, instead of taking a turn, a player can decide to pass. They would get the number of victory points equal to the current countdown tile. In this case, it would be four victory points. However, the game would be over for that player. Then when the last round would be completed, the game would be over. Then proceed to final scoring. You can use this 8 card as a reference. First, score the victory points for your bonfires. You will score the number which is depicted on the bonfire. You don't score any victory points for tasks which are not completed. Then all guardians standing next to the bonfire, so not the guardians on the path, standing next to the bonfire will score victory points shown on that particular space. Then for each portal, which is next to a lit bonfire, you would score two victory points. In our example, it's only these two portals. This one is not next to a lit bonfire and there's no portal next to this bonfire. Then you will score two victory points for each path tile of the same color as the adjacent bonfire. You don't have to have a portal there, just the color of those path tiles and the bonfires have to match. In this example, we have three matching pairs, so that's six victory points. Then each player would score a common goals, which have been completed during the game. Common goals with the novices still there wouldn't score anything. Then for each remaining fate tile, you would gain three victory points. And for each pair of remaining action tiles and resources, you would score additional one victory point. Then the player with the most points is the winner. So that's how you play Bonfire. If you would have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll be happy to answer your questions. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can even support the channel on our Patreon page. My name is Branislav Berec. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.